What's up guys, Gums here, and welcome back to Pro Wrestling Mode 2022 for episode number 80 of the Cannondale Drop Pack Career Mode. In today's episode, we shall begin a new tour, the Ostvest Tour, only 10 stages today. I'm a bit short on, on time, and I really wanted to have an episode released by this weekend. So we're going to have this as uh, the episode today, with the uh, Costa Rican NCs for the next episode. We'll have all of the national championships, so you'll have a grand total of 22 races. Uh, which is why I could not have them with the Ostvest Tour. Uh, and then we'll move to the Tour de France. Now, what is the uh, Ostvest Tour? It is a race that replaces the uh, Tour de Suisse. It is a custom-made 10-stage uh, race in the heart of Germany. Um, although this says Quebec, Quebec, but it isn't. Um, we've got some mountain stages, some hilly stages, some cobble stages. So all around it should be, I think, an interesting stage. There's room for everyone to win. The team is similar to the one that we brought on the Giro with Afonso, Betzel, Jorgensen, Crema, Kria, Suter, and Joel Wood. Joel Wood? Luke Wood, sorry. Without further ado, let's go for a time trial in Dresden. Pippo Gala is the one leading in Dresden. Uh, it's an interesting time trial. It's basically 85 until it goes up. Um, what's the competition here? Egan Bernal? Alright, Egan Bernal, I guess. No one here. No one here. I mean, I guess Wojvon not technically, because there are some cobbles and you could bully me on there. Uh, at at Jolmeda, for Timo Banke. Henrik Maas. Alright, not not great. I've seen better competition um, elsewhere. Jonas has 13 seconds down at the first intermediate, but that's okay. I'm going to increase his rhythm. Heading into the main climb, we'll try and catch uh, Stefan Kuhn, who's not Stefan Kuhn, right? It's not even his German counterpart. Oh, it's a great effort by Jonas Kria here, one point kilometer, sorry, one kilometer left. For the uh, latest winner of the Giro d'Italia, cross the line for Jonas Kria. P2, tied with Alberto Betiol, and 20 seconds down on Pippo Ganna. Van is gonna claim P2, and Bernal will not claim P3. It's a podium to start the Ostvest Tour. Stage one is a tricky one between Dresden and Dresden, 195 kilometers. As we'll go through some of the uh, German um, backcountry, that's not a word, um, I don't know, maybe it is, I don't know. Um, we'll have some cobbles, some hills across the end, the final 40 kilometers, that could disrupt the person. It's a plus two today for uh, Mr. Afonso. Not many successes on um, the Giro for him. I genuinely want him to redeem himself heading into the Portuguese championships, which if I lose, knowing that I think it's a flat race, well, once again, you will not be seeing that national championship. <laughs> Crashing the peloton as we begin the final hill of the day, um, the Fernsehturm, which is the tower of television, I guess. Um, it's a cobble, cobble sector, 900 meters, three stars, as we well um experienced the, uh, well, the ground, clearly. We've accelerated in the peloton uh, just to, to, to see what would happen. We'll have um, managed to come back at the breakaway. And yeah, we're gonna prepare for our sprint, 26 kilometers on until the end. Everyone basically is in the peloton. May have uh, misspoke about saying that everyone was in the peloton. There's only 22 riders so far uh, as we uh, finished the uh, Stauffenberg Alley. Most of the riders have been dropped following the, um, the Fernsehturm and the Borsberg. It's another crash, I think, for Wout van Aert right here. It's absolutely heartbreaking. That's number three of the day for the, um, for the, uh, the Belgian rider. Well, clearly he will not be winning this uh, Ostvest Tour, and the question is, will he even finish it, as we've got the Tour de France coming up? 10 kilometers left, the train is set for a win of Afonso, or at least a good performance, is uh, everything that I can ask. Joel Suter has got 99. He's got Luke Wood in the wheel, then Justin Crema, then Afonso. Comment José Maria? Allez, 2.8 kilometers. Luke Wood takes the lead. I'm hoping that there's not many corners so far. I'm not seeing any. I think this is a straight run down to the line. There goes Crema. There goes Jose Maria Afonso. Can he hold on to the line? Oh, he cannot. It's a win for Jason Romboots ahead of Afonso. And Blake Quick wasn't quick enough to beat us today. Well, I mean, I guess Romboots was quicker than us, which is, uh, yeah, it's a bit disappointing. But only 17 riders in the first group, though. Made a, made a lot of progress today. Run stage, wind zones between Leipzig and Altenburg, 155 kilometers, plus four for Afonso, an even better chance uh, than tomorrow's and than yesterday's. 
we've been third on stage one, second on stage two. If you do the maths, we should be P1 on stage three. But stats, well, they can lie. Final five kilometers, bit of a struggle to be at the front, but we successfully done so. Uh, lost some energy in the process, trying to bring uh, Alfonso Wood and Crema to the front. Don't block anyone, Betiol, thank you. Uh, most of Lukewood's energy is gone, so is Justin Crema's, but it's downhill. I'm gonna launch with the German right now. Oh god, that's too early. Alfonso, yep, it's it's too early again. It's, I've done the exact same as yesterday, except today I've done it a lot earlier. It's the win for Jose Perez, Joel Perez, I have Matthias Rirodo, and N N Nils, who? 77 sprint, man. God, I'm shit. Maybe the stats lied about me winning, um, maybe between Jena and Eisenach. We can do things differently. Um, I'll, I swear, I will promise, I, tr I will try to launch later than usual. I've launched with 1.2k with, with Crema, I didn't think that was long enough. Pause. We've got a slight uh, incline coming up in um, this lead up to Eisenach. And a lot of teams trying to seize the first position. Uh, in the sprinting trains, we are being uh, put here by, uh, I think, it's, is it Apokai or Ape, Apekai? Uh, um, something like that. Hey Lila, yep. Hey there, Delilah. How is it looking in New York City? I don't know, because I'm in Germany for the final sprint in Eisenach. Joel Suter is gonna go 99, three kilometers to go. This time I'm making sure I'm not gonna launch too early. Matter of fact, I'm probably launched too late. 1.7k to go, there goes Justin Crema. There goes Luke Wood, there goes Afonso, then we fucking got it, it's a win for Jose Maria Afonso ahead of Luke Wood and Benny Guermey. We finally have a win. Th this is good. Following our first win, could we maybe aim for more? It's a hilly stage between Eisenach and Oberhof, and the final climb is 6 km, average grind of 5, a max of 11, but it seems to be at the beginning. Not the most difficult stage, and uh, we still have some good days of plus four on Jonas Kreer, plus five on Matteo Jorgensen. I'll try and get the stage, but I cannot promise anything. We're gonna start the final climb, but Oberhof, as I said, six kilometers, an average of five percent, roughly. Jonas Kreer is by far my leader, 63 riders left in a stage that was quite difficult. There was an early break where we had a lot to do to, uh, to come back at it, but we did so successfully. And um, I guess here we are. I'll increase the rhythm of Luke Wood. I'll stop Mr. Betio on the side. Uh, Jorgensen is having a very good day, and I know there's going to be some uh, hashtag free Jorgensen in the comments, which I absolutely understand. Uh, but he'll have his chance very soon. Trust me, US Championship is going to get his chance, unless Magnus Sheffield or Brian McNulty have better days. But if they don't, it's, it's, it's for Luke Wood. Written in the stars for him. In the meantime, Tells uh, Jorgensen is gonna go 99. Jorgensen is gonna start his effort. Oh, hello, sprinters. Oh, I, I forgot about them. I forgot. Oh, well, they, they forgot about their rhythm. It's a win for Jonas Kria in Oberhof against uh, everyone but ahead of Matthew Jorgensen and Benny Girmay with another P3 when I win. It's a good sign to see Benny in P3. It usually means I'm ahead. Hilly stage today between uh, Laura Main and Heidelberg. Isn't that where there's a, there's a castle? Is it? Maybe I'm wrong. Um, I think there's a, there's a castle in Heidelberg. But may, maybe I'm, I'm chatting absolutely bollocks. Uh, or bollocks, sorry. I'm gonna paste today in the peloton because I've taken the leader's jersey for Jonas Kria. Uh, we've got a good lead. All around, it's it's looking good if I'm being honest. Uh, the first competition on the mountain aspect would be Carlos Rodriguez, and he's a minute down. Some could argue Ede Schelling, um, because he's good in mountains. Granted, not as good as Jonas Kria, but he does have that 75 cobbles. I uh, do have 69, and all of that number may be nice. I'm gonna struggle in that stage between Eisenberg and uh, Bad Kreuznach. All right, when the uh, Königstuhl, the chair of the king. We're gonna pace, we're gonna pace with uh, Jonas Kria. The only issue is that the summit is quite far from the end, so I may just pace and then I'll attack 
before the IS in, um, is it Ahanizen or is it Amizen? Ah, that's very, tr very tricky. I'm gonna guess it's Amizen Vukal? Probably, but if it means something, I, I, I don't have a clue. To be fair, we did manage to create some damage. 27 riders left in the first group as we approached the Amizen Vukal. I was indeed um, correct, it wasn't R and it was an M. Two kilometers until the IS at the summit of this uh, little hill, we're gonna catch um, Raul Garcia. And attack from the get go with Matteo Jorgensen. The aim is simple, I'm gonna stop Suter, counter attack with Jonas Kria. And see where we go from there. Genuinely. I I'd love to know. I don't have a clue. Jorgensen, uh, go, go, go take the Willow Trail suit there, I don't know. Do whatever you will. Finn Fisher Black managed uh, to bring... Oh, actually, no, he didn't. He actually came back at me. Uh, but I'm, I'm gonna guess it, it, it backfired, because, uh, well... Joel Suite, sorry, Joel Asker is still back in the lead. No, Fisher Black managed to, uh, to bring the band together. I'll try and follow Yates, but it's gonna be a win for Ida Schelling again. No competition whatsoever for Ida Schelling today. Who takes the stage and some added seconds in Heidelberg. P2 for Jonas Kriya. My plan backfired a lot. This is the one stage that has me worried between Eisenberg and Bad Kreuznach. There's a lot of cobbles. A lot of hills. Uh, it's, it's only a plus two for, uh, for Jonas. It's 87 fitness for Jonas Kriya as well. To be fair, he was already below 90 at the end of the Giro, so it's not surprising he's at 87. It's actually quite surprising he managed to get a plus 3 plus 4 on some days. Uh, how, how the fuck am I making this work then? Matthew Jorgensen, I trust you to just save me. Him and maybe Betiol? Uh, yeah, Betiol could do some work. I think the climb worried me a lot. I think the stage as a whole worried me a lot, mostly because I just saw cobbles uh, basically everywhere. But they're one star cobbles, so it's not too bad. Uh, there's oh well, it's just five riders. Oh, it's just it's already just me. It's it's literally just the team. Come on, uh, Jorgensen is gonna take the wheel of uh, Wood. Yep, Kria will take the wheel of Jorgensen. And it's a nine-man group. This has gone a lot better than I had uh, expected, if I'm being honest. Matteo's work is absolutely remarkable. Uh, the impact is out on today's stage. Cannot be forgotten. And with 7k to go, sure, we're potentially and highly likely leading Jake Stewart towards uh, a stage win here. Although I'm just going to attack. Yeah, I just figured I needed to have a kick here. They've been dropped. They've been uh, just dropped, but just is about enough here. Six kilometers remaining, 20 seconds in a group paced by uh, Rico, Almeida, Steinhauser and Stewart. Interestingly, they are literally pacing Jake Stewart towards a potential win. Not exactly sure that it's the wisest plan by Rico, but you do you, rider from Greenville Cycling. And despite his biggest effort, Rico shall not come back, it's gonna be a 1-2, and I'm gonna gift it to Jorgensen because he deserves it. It's a win for Matteo Jorgensen. Adios best tour today. It's a zero for Jonas Kria, between Farsheim and Rottensol. 187 kilometers. Uh, you know what? Breakaway day with Joel Suter. Sounds good to me. Um, times are tough. They, they really are. 32 riders left in the first group. Time fully for us, Jonas Kier is one of them, uh, but it, it, it's not been a piece of, of piece of work, just staying in his group. Uh, also, some good riders in the breakaway, mostly Rico, uh, P5 of the GC, but uh, he is he seems to be struggling. But yeah, Richard Carabas has been uh, the one putting the, the tempo the entire day. It, it just shows that Voxy wants to do something. Not sure what they want to do, but they for sure want to achieve it. Uh, or maybe replace Ben Al, he's only 8 minutes down in DC. Started to play chess in this game. Um, they're all attacking and stopping. I wanted to follow like 3 attacks, the game never allowed me to do so. Jorgensen is trying to come back, I'm not sure if it's gonna give me any good. Or do me any good, sorry. Uh, but I'll, I'll try my best to um, bring back the current P2 of the GC. And I think he's actually gonna do 
uh, just da as this attack here in the peloton. Timo Brest, Hugo Maillard. Peloton goes back for another round. Jorgensen is going to explode once again. But the two riders ahead on dangerous for me. So I'm just going to let the peloton do their thing, I think. Uh, and I will not try to, to chase them down. Oh, the situation has changed. Um, Gap is now 130, and they're still not dangerous. But uh, I would have liked to, to, to go for the stage. Uh, I let Romo just get like, what, 5-6 meters with shelling, uh, hoping that just in usual PCM fashion, the the the, the AI would merge. Um, but the AI didn't. So I guess I'm going to be leading the sprint here in Rotensol. Not for P1, for what it seems to be P5, but uh, it's going to be a win for Hugo Maillard, there's been some attacks behind. Do you really think I'm going to let you go? Come on, Zhao. Surely you, you should know better for me here. You, you, come on. Come on. Javier Romo takes the stage uh, in Rotensol, the stage before the Queen stage. P2 for Rilei Schelling, P3 for Zhao Almeida. I'm going to finish with the main favorites today, good. Queen stage of this Osves tour between Kandal and Kandlag, 180 kilometers roughly, and uh, we're gonna climb many things. The Kreuzweg, the Wiedener Egg, uh, Schau Inland, Kandel, and finally Kandelberg. Um, it should be interesting, it should be interesting. It's a plus one for Jonas Kria, who strengthened his lead today, uh, oh sorry, yesterday. I'm, I'm confused with dates, but uh, Lawe, it's, it's like 11 p.m., right? I'm fatigued. Um, but yeah, I increased my lead obviously because Matteo Jorgensen was P2 and he got dropped. So it's now a 247 on the Portuguese round meter. And yeah, the aim is simple. Just try to, to, to keep the yellow jersey. As always. It's the end of the road for Matteo Jorgensen, uh, who's completely knackered. I'm gonna try and push him to the, the maximum of his um, abilities. But yeah, he's gone. Jonas Kria leads the group, 1.5 cancel the summit. Technically, the, the, I should not pace at this point because I've, I mean, the, the five riders ahead don't really pose any threat to my GC uh, ambitions. But I'm, I'm still going to pace, uh, mostly because I'm dumb. And I had at one point some hope that I could catch the breakaway, but I cannot. So yeah, we're going to slow down, uh, recover in a downhill portion and head back towards uh, Kandelberg as winner of this race. Of course, there was one move I'd have to follow, that would be Joao Almeida's uh, 247 down in the GC. I can't just let him slide. Uh, it's fine if he gets 20 seconds, I'm alright with it. I've, 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 uh, I've done my piece with the fact that I won't get the stage. Marco Brenner seems uh, that he's the one on his way to take the stage on his uh, home Grand Tour. What is home tour? Well done, Mr. Brenner. Great sass, by the way, for the uh, leader of Vacant Soleil. He's going to take the stage in Kandelberg ahead of this group here. Yates is going to get P2, Romo P3. Well gone with Almeida. Uh, to be fair, he's, he's, got, he's got some time on, uh, on me, you know. He's done well. He's done well. Not well enough to, to obviously beat me in the GC, but he's done well. He's going to claim P3 to Almeida. Enric Mas will get P4, and I'm going to end up alongside Bernal. And then Caravas, uh, just trying to find my way through South America. Final day of this Ostwest tour, it is a time trial between Staufen and Bresigau and Mülheim, 30 kilometers flat, and then we will reach um, a hill in uh, Lugisland. One kilometer, average of 7.5, max of 12%, meaning that a climber could potentially uh, get a decent time after today's finish. Uh, Finn Fischerblack leads in Mülheim. But Ghana leads both intermediates. I'm um, not sure actually if he crossed on it. He did. It's in P2 for people Ghana. Meaning that uh, what I just said about a potential climber doing a good time is absolutely plausible. 21 seconds down for Jonas Kria, the first intermediate. Expected better from uh, the uh, Rolf Luxembourg. We're going to sprint through this hill, trying to uh, maximize the uh, climbing aspect of this time trial. And as soon as we're on the summit, go back to 84. There's a bit of a downhill portion. Reduce the rhythm, reduce the rhythm. All right, back to 70 we go. Am I out of yellow already? I am. That's a bit, it's a bit shit. I may have, uh, I may have overcooked this time trial. I won't be winning in Mülheim. Finn Fischer Black has taken care of that. It's P3 for Jonas Kriar, which I will happily take. Meaning that your podiums of this Ostwest tour are Finn Fischer Black winning in uh, this stage 10. 
in Mülheim ahead of Pili Bogana and Jonas Kria. Uh, I think Jonas got third at both the inaugural and the final time trial. But uh, mostly he wins the uh, entirety of this tour ahead of Jean Almeida and Henrik Maas. Mathieu Jorgensen claims P3 with Egan Bernal in P5. Uh, it's Ekai Rico in P6, never heard of the lad, probably never will because he's not born yet. Javier Romo is the best combat for the Team Mayo ahead of Maxim Van Riels and Finn Fischer Black. A great classification, if I'm being honest, for um, a mountain classification of a minor tour. Jonas Kria wins the point classification ahead of Javier Romo and Ida Schelling, despite the stages of um, Jose Maria Afonso. Jonas Kria is also the best young rider, very well. And Cardinal Drapak is the best team. Alright, uh, moving on to the uh, Costa Rican NCs, and then we'll wrap up the episode. I'm pretty sure that we lost last year both uh, titles in Costa Rica. Aaron Izzano is back, and he's back uh, with a force, he's back with a bang, but mostly he's back with a zero. Zero being uh, the amount of medals I'm bringing from this time trial. Final kilometer for Aaron Izzano, he was currently P5 uh, at the intermediate, he's gonna sprint to the line. I mean, I'm I'm P6 and there's three more Donnies to cross the line, so yeah. Not only am I not getting any medals, I'm getting bottom three. In Costa Rica! I mean, I lost the uh, time trial, it would be fitting for me to lose today as well. Uh, oh, last year was quite a degrading loss as well from uh, from what I recall. I got dropped on, on pure leg power. By Donny, who had 60 in, in, in hills, I think. I cannot let that happen today. I've done it once, and one was already way too many times. I think this game is going to bring me to my death. These three Dons here, right, for a reason I absolutely ignore, have literally been attacking for 120 whole kilometers! Just let me fucking just stay with you. No, stop attacking! Somehow, we're going to manage to make this even worse than last season's. Because last year, I, just, I lost a 1v1 to a Donny who was shit. This year, these three, right, they've stopped attacking. Right, they, they're, they're peaceful. They're, they're, they're loving life. <laughs> they're not taking a single relay, even if it's a pacing 10. So, I'm going to attack, and I'm going on my own, because if I'm not moving, there's this, this guy here, Kevin Rivera, he's coming back. For me once, and I learned from my mistakes, it's a win for Aron Itzano in San Jose, more than 9 minutes ahead of the following group, um, yeah, it was a good move to attack with Aron. Uh, you won't ever see the Costa Rica jersey in this save, I think. Because I don't think Aaron has a lot of races left. But at least he can write on his resume when he'll be looking for a team in Continental that he's won in Costa Rica. Quite a decent performance. Um, three stages on the Osves Tour and the GCO as well as two alternate classifications. Uh, the Costa Rican NCs, and you haven't seen it because I've played on my own, but I've won the uh, Dauphiné with two stages with McNulty and the Dvars uh, at Hagland with Ethan Eita. So we're still doing quite well, we're far from the 50% uh, win ratio that I wanted to get, but it's not too bad. Also a second thing, Jonas Kria, um, I wanted to make a bit of a point on him, because he's just raced uh, his 60th race day of the season, meaning that his season is basically over, he's got Luxembourg Championship left and I think like the Tour of Croatia or something. Uh, he's got 15 wins out of 60 race days, so that is exactly 25% wins for Jonas Kria this season. The 22-year-old has a bright, bright future ahead of him. That, nevertheless, will wrap up today's episode. In the next one, we will be Mr. Worldwide once again and heading to every country in the world for the national championships. And then, as I said, we'll start the Tour de France for episode, which will be 81, I think, of the uh, career mode. And then we'll very quickly arrive to PCM 2023. Um, I'm not sure at all of what my plans are for the um, release of PCM, so I'm not going to say anything uh, beforehand. Um, what I do know is that I'm working in the entirety of July, daily. So I may not be able to record a lot of content during July, 
there won't be a daily PCM video, I think. I, I don't think I have the time to do so. Uh, but I'll see. I'm not even sure what team I'll do a career mode on. Uh, the only thing I can guarantee is that there will be a career mode. As I said, that'll wrap up the episode. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed today's episode. If you didn't, please do leave a like down below. If you're new to the channel and want to see more of this content going forward, then feel free to subscribe if you haven't so already. And I'll catch you in the very, very near future. My name is Guillaume. Have an amazing day. See ya. Pass me the funk, get your funk on, girl, and don't you ever let Pass it me the go. Funk. We're getting drunk in here, and what comes next will 